In this lesson, we're going to use the square of a binomial pattern, use the sum and difference pattern, and use special product patterns to solve real life problems. Using the square of a binomial pattern. The diagram shows a square with a side length of A plus B units. You can see that the area of the square is going to be just this A plus B quantity squared. And this is going to simplify out to A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. If you see this, we have A times A, which is A squared. I have A times B, which gives us this rectangle AB. And then I do that again, A times B, that's AB. And then I do B times B, which is going to be B squared. Okay. This is one version of a pattern called the square of a binomial. To find the other version of this pattern, use algebra. Replace B with negative B. So here I have A plus negative B, which is the same thing as A minus B. And then if I square that entire quantity, I have A squared plus 2A times negative B plus negative B quantity squared. Okay? And this simplifies to A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. I'm going to show you guys how that works uh, if we foiled it out. Okay? So if I had A minus B quantity squared, okay, and this will work with A plus B, uh, that's the same thing as A minus B. Well, if I'm squaring something, it's just times itself. So A minus B times the quantity A minus B. Then if I do my FOIL method first, which is A squared, and then outers, which is A times negative B, so it's minus AB. My inners would be negative B times A, which is also negative AB. And then negative B times negative B for my last is positive B squared. Okay, and then this becomes A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. Same would work for A plus B quantity squared. You get the uh, same thing except for this minus 2AB would be plus 2AB. I'm going to scroll down. So basically what I just said, uh, we have down here the algebra version is the quantity A plus B squared is equal to A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. And then A minus B, that quantity squared, is A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. Uh, and the example here for x plus 5, I'd have x squared and then plus 2 times x times 5 and then plus 5 squared. So that's going to give me x squared plus 10x plus 25. Uh, over here, I have 2x minus 3. And if this quantity is squared, I'm going to do my first part, 2x quantity squared and then minus 2 times 2x times negative 3 and then minus 2 times 2x times 3. You could also think of this as plus 2 times 2x times negative 3. You'll get the same value. And then plus my last term, which is going to be 3 squared. Okay, another way to think of this is we have negative 3 times negative 3. This will all simplify to 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. For this example, we're going to find each product. Okay. Well, because I'm squaring this, I can use my square of a binomial pattern product here. So I'm just going to have my first part squared, so 3x squared, okay, and then plus 2 times my first term, which is 3x, times my second term, which is 4, and then plus my second term squared. So it's going to be plus 4 squared. Okay, And after you practice doing this for a while, you might not even need to write out each step here. Okay, Well, 3x quantity squared is going to be 9x squared. And then plus 2 times 3 times 4. Well, 2 times 3 is 6. Times 4 is 24. So this is going to give me 24x. And then 4 squared is 16. All right, so now we're done with part A. For part B, I have 5x and then negative 2y as my terms. So I'll do 5x squared. And then you could do the minus, or you could just think of it as all plus and just plus a negative term. So it would be plus 2 times 5x times negative 2y, and then plus, you could think of this as negative 2y quantity squared, or plus y squared, because this negative being squared is going to cancel and turn to a positive. And I see I forgot to put parentheses here, so I should put a pair of parentheses right there. So now I have 5x quantity squared, which gives me 25x squared, and then this is going to be a negative term. And then 2 times 5 is 10, times 2 is 20. So minus 20, and then xy, because I have both these variables. And then this is going to turn into plus 4y squared. All right, so now we're done. Using the sum and difference pattern. To find the product quantity x plus 2 times quantity x minus 2, 
you can multiply the two binomials using the FOIL method. So if I do my firsts, I get x times x, which is x squared. My outers is x times negative 2, which is negative 2x. And then 2 times x is positive 2x. And then 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And you see that the negative 2x and the positive 2x cancel. This suggests a pattern for the product of the sum and a difference of two terms. Okay, So the algebra version of that is a plus b, that quantity, times the quantity a minus b. a times a is a squared. The a times negative b and then a times positive b is going to cancel. Then I'd have b times negative b, which is negative b squared. So it just simplifies to a squared minus b squared. And then the example with x plus 3 and x minus 3, if I multiply these two expressions, I'm just going to get x squared minus 9. Okay, And you can FOIL this out if you uh, want to see why that works. So for example 2, I'm going to find each product, and I can use the sum and difference pattern here. Okay? I notice that I have t plus 5 times the quantity t minus 5. Okay, And I know that this is just going to simplify to my first term squared minus my second term squared. So it's going to be t squared minus 5 squared. Okay, And then t squared is just t squared, and then minus 5 squared becomes minus 25. So now we're done with part A. For part B, I have 3x plus y and then 3x minus y, those two expressions being multiplied. So once again, I have my first term squared, so 3x squared, and then minus y squared. Okay, now I'm just going to simplify this. So 3x squared, that quantity is going to be 9x squared, and then minus y squared. And if you wanted to check either of these, you could just use the FOIL method. So if I did my FOIL method for part B, I'd do 3x times 3x, that's going to be... 9x squared. Then I would do 3x times negative y. So it's going to be negative 3xy. And then I do 3x times positive y, which is plus 3xy. And then I do y squared minus y, which is minus y squared. You can see that these two terms are like terms because they have identical variable parts. They cancel out, which just brings me to my final answer, 9x squared minus y squared. Okay, so you don't have to do that each time. That's just why it works. Anyway, I have finished parts A and B, and now we're done with this one. For example 3, we're going to use the special product patterns to find the product of 26 and 34. Okay? Now, this is just a bit of uh, mental math tricks that we can do using what we just figured out. Okay, So I see that this number, 26, is 4 away from 30, and I see that 34 is 4 away from 30. So I have 26. I can rewrite 26 times 34 as 30 minus 4 times 30 plus 4, if I wanted to, okay? And now I can treat this as my sum and difference products, okay? So I have my first term minus my second term times my first term plus my second term. So this is going to become 30 squared and then minus 4 squared. Okay, well, 30 squared is 900, and then 4 squared is 16, so all I have to do is subtract 16 from 900, and I'm going to get 884, okay? So that's how to use mental math to figure out a simple uh, multiplication product like this. And now we're done with this one. For example, four, a combination of two genes determines the color of the dark patches of a border collie's coat. An offspring inherits one patch color gene from each parent. Each parent has two color genes, and the offspring has an equal chance of inheriting either one. The gene B is for black patches, and the gene R is for red patches. Any gene combination with a B results in black patches. Suppose each parent has the same gene combination, BR. The Punnett square shows the possible gene combinations of the offspring and the resulting patch colors. So for part A, we need to figure out what percent of the possible gene combinations result in black patches. And then in part B, we need to show how we could use a polynomial to model the possible gene combinations. Okay, so. As I can see, this is my component square here. I have BR, which is one parent, and then BR, again, which is another parent. So my possibilities are going to be B times B, which is BB. And then I have B times R, which is BR. And I have another B times R. And then I have R, R. So first of all, what percent of the possible gene combinations result in black patches? Well, this is pretty simple, 3 out of 4. And 3 out of 4 is the same as 75%. So that one's pretty quick and easy, 75% of the possibilities are going to be black patches. Uh, and then part B is how we're going to use our polynomial. Well, we can treat this BR gene as B plus R. And since I'm doing B plus R times B plus R, that's the same thing as B plus R 
quantity squared. And I can use my special product pattern to just rewrite this as b squared plus 2br plus r squared. But in this case, we're not going to write it out as um, r squared and b squared just for the application here. So I'll just rewrite this as bb plus br plus br plus rr. So here are all of our possibilities. We can have two b's, a b and an r, a b and an r. So we have two possible b and r combinations, and then our rr, which is consistent with our table here. Anyway, we've successfully used a polynomial to model the possible gene combinations, and now we're done with this one.